As government rhetoric finally begins moving towards living with COVID, is it time we rethink our attitudes towards testing? Angus Dalgleish, a professor of oncology, has argued that the constant use of lateral flows has seen the nation lurch into mass hysteria. Writing in the Daily Mail today, he argued it is tantamount to national self-harm. Hundreds of thousands of British businesses are now being crippled because of a mania over checking people for an infection that they may have no symptoms for. Now, Professor Dalgleish, who's here tonight, is of the opinion that free lateral flows need to go if we are to have any hope of returning to normality. What do you think? Should we axe free COVID tests in order to live with the virus? You can email me, dan at gbnews.uk. Always love getting your emails. You can tweet me too at gbnews. We've got a poll running there now. I'll bring you the results very shortly. But to help you make your mind up, let me bring in the professor and his opponent tonight, Dr. David Strain, senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter Medical School, who says it's vital that tests remain free until COVID is vanquished. So, Professor Dalgleish, we need to axe lateral flows, don't we, if we have any hope of getting back to normal? And by axing them, I say surely only people with symptoms should actually be testing themselves. Well, this is exactly what I've been arguing for a long time. What is the point of testing people who are then positive and they have to self-isolate with an agent that is just so, so infectious? And what's convinced me that it is completely pointless trying to have a uh, get rid of COVID per se and let it just uh, in a zero COVID policy and the futility of what uh, we're seeing in Australia at the moment. Yeah. Uh, is is that uh, what is the point when people who've been vaccinated, they take all the precautions, they go to various events and they're all coming out infected two to five days later with the Omicron. Now, from my point of view, that is wonderful news because the Omicron is infecting them. Often they don't know, but they've taken a test because somebody else felt a little odd. And so they're positive. So the whole lot of them, half of my staff were isolated last week because of this very scenario. Mm. None of them are ill. Uh, so why on earth are we basically uh, committing sort of, uh, well, business suicide? Mm. And the effect this is having on uh, small business, as, and particularly the NHS, is really a national disaster and costing us an absolute fortune. And I just reiterate, I think the fact you have an infection that's so infectious that everybody seems to be getting is wonderful news. Because this could be the final proper vaccination, much better than uh, keep jabbing with different ones, third, fourth, etc. This is going to give us a broad range of vaccination. And I think that's going to be the be all and end all and beginning of the end. And we should actually adapt accordingly. Dr. David Strain, I mean, all of that from Professor Dalgleish makes me feel happy and, and positive. Why do you say that, that we should keep on testing? So I have to say, I agree with a lot of what Professor Douglas has just said. I mean, the Omicron variant is actually the thing that's going to protect us from this new IHU variant in France, which is a lot more deadly, but a lot less transmissible. And therefore, having the Omicron variant is going to be beneficial in that case. But we are still seeing a lot of people, particularly the unvaccinated and those immunocompromised um, for many other conditions are in hospital at the moment. I've spent most of today planning to open additional wards to care for these patients. Um, and we do need to be thinking about our engagement with these highly vulnerable people. Unless we have some idea of um, our status, it effectively means we are putting these vulnerable people, putting elderly people into their own personal lockdown. Uh, and therefore we are, by definition, discriminating against some of the most vulnerable in society if we are getting into a position where we are mixing with them without knowing what risk we but, but David, them. throughout human now, history, D David, I, sorry, can I just interrupt and, and get you to address something specifically? You would accept that throughout human history, uh, the extremely medical vulnerable have always been asked uh, to protect themselves in a way that ordinary citizens don't. Because the normal run of the mill flu could kill someone who, who is very unwell. I think the point that folk like Professor Dalgleish and myself are making is that we cannot continue to effectively shut down society. Everything that we're seeing about the Omicron variant is pretty much most of the population will have had it within six weeks or so. Like Professor Dalgleish, I am really keen 
that Omicron does spell the end. We are really hopeful that there's not going to be any few further mutations. We're hopeful that we're not going to end up in this position where the next variant is actually comes back more like Delta rather than more like the common cold. We all hope that's going to be the case. But for the next six weeks or so, we have these vulnerable patients that all previously were part of society. I mean, we've been looking after people who are teachers, who are uh, working in the bank, working in many other agencies, who are going about normal life. And whilst this is around and people are potentially spreading it to them, you've actually taken all of them out of circulation as well. If you look at healthcare staff, if I am in hospital and I give COVID to anybody who's in hospital for any other reason, COVID will make their condition worse. And therefore, there are some but, scenarios. But Professor Dalglish, isn't essential. that going to happen anyway? Yes, this this is my point. At the moment, we're just basically uh, spending a fortune on people being tested. They can go and get tested if they feel like it. If they don't feel well or a contact this, that, and the other, it's costing an absolute fortune. Six billion was the figure I saw recently. Yeah. No one's saying that you shouldn't do a test to protect the vulnerable. So people going in to work with them in the healthcare and in the hospital, of course, they will have a test to make sure that they're not infected and going to be passing it on. Although, I mean, I personally think that if you're uninfected, you work with the uninfected. If you're actually uh, positive, you work with the positive people. I think that would actually uh, solve a lot of the staffing problems we have as well. Because this is something that is infectious and only the, the really vulnerable people are at risk. Mm. And we, we can iso isolate them or test them like we've always done. Yeah, because Professor Dalgleish, explain to me, but, but, but before COVID-19 came along... Uh, we didn't used to shut down hospitals every year because of flu or, or the common cold, did we? So we, we have to start trusting human beings to, to be responsible and, and make sensible decisions. And I think we need to start listening to our bodies more because actually we usually understand if we're transmissible or not based on how we're feeling. And that's not only common sense, it's science. Absolutely. I, um, I lived through the time when I'm an oncologist, but I am an oncologist old enough that we actually were general physicians and we did mm. the hospital take. And I remember every winter, it is, especially in the NHS, how we can't cope. There's a wave yeah. of flu and pneumonia coming in. And you know, some years it was over 30,000 people day came in and died. And these were all the pe always the people, with a very few exceptions, who had other underlying conditions who were very ill at any rate. It was often called the old folks' friend uh, when it came in and of often terminated the lives which weren't very pleasant for them. And yet we didn't do anything about that. And we're dealing with a disease now that is probably, uh, if you weigh it up, infectious and morbidity is no, certainly no worse. So why would we uh, change our attitude for this? And we should just carry on and just take the precautions in uh, the people who are vulnerable, the care homes and the hospitals. Everybody else, forget it. Only use the test to help with the diagnosis. Someone's got symptoms. Is it flu? Is it pneumonia? Is it COVID? Yeah, that's when I would exactly. Use the test. Let's stop this concept of testing people every single day. I couldn't agree more. Professor of Oncology Angus Dalgleish, thank you so much, and thank you too to Dr. David Strain, senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter.